Welcome to the Not Your Average Runner podcast. If you're a woman who is midlife and plus sized and you want to start running but don't know how or if it's even possible, you're in the right place. Using proven strategies and real life experience, certified running and life coach Jill Angie shares how you can learn to run in the body you have right now. You are listening to episode 12 of the Not Your Average Runner podcast. I'm your host, Jill Angie, and I have a very special episode for you today. I am so excited I can barely contain myself. I recently did a live interview with Myrna Valerio, also known as the Myrnavator. Now, if you've been living under a rock and haven't heard of Myrna, she is the force behind Fat Girl Running, which is the blog that started it all. She's been featured on the cover of Runner's World. She's done countless ultra marathons. She speaks all over the country. And most recently, she's authored the best selling book, A Beautiful Work in Progress, which is the story of how she came to be an ultra runner and inspiration. She's everywhere and she's amazing. In short, she's really a true badass and a revolutionary in the fitness industry. And I know you're just going to love her as much as I do. Links to follow Myrna on social media are all in the show notes, so make sure after you listen to the episode, you check her out because she's really, really inspiring. You can find all of the links and all the information at www.notyouraveragerunner.com slash 12. And without further ado, here is Myrna. All right, so I am super excited to be bringing you the amazing, the one of a kind, Myrna Valerio, the Myrna Vator. And um, if you are a runner, <laughs> there is like no way you don't know who Myrna is, but she is here. She's going to spend the next hour with us telling us everything. And you guys are going to get to ask her tons of questions at the end. Yeah, I guess that's about all I have to say about that because I just want, Myrna, I just want you to like talk and tell us everything about yourself. So <laughs> I was born in Brooklyn, New York. No, I'm just <laughs> that's so much fun. Yeah, so tell us like, like, how did you get started with running? And first of all, thank you so much for being here. And um, for everybody, like, actually, let's get one more thing out of the way. If you have not read her book, A Beautiful Work in Progress, just go, as soon as we're done with the interview tonight, like go to Amazon, go to Barnes & Noble, order it, read it. It's like, it's laugh out loud funny. It's inspirational. It's just, it's extremely well written as well. <laughs> it's like beautifully written and just, yeah, just go get it. So that's it. So Marna, tell us everything. How did you get started? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me on your live on your show. I really appreciate it. Um, and, I, and I always appreciate the opportunity to tell my story over and over and over again, because I think it's important for people to hear from a, like a normal person, somebody that's not elite, not, you know, winning things, because I've never won. Wait, actually, I won my age group in a 10K because I was the only person under 40 at the time. But anyways, that was the only thing that I've ever won. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyway, so so thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's nice to see you after what, two years? Yeah, it's been about two years since yeah. uh, since the retreat in Philly. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, when is the next one I want to show up? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay, so actually, I started running back in 1989 which is a really long time ago, when I was 13. Um, I was a freshman in high school, and I was trying out for the field hockey team on the very, very first day I got on campus. It was a boarding school, and uh, I said, you know, I looked over to the soccer field. They looked like they were not having fun, so I'm like, I'm not trying out for that. <laughs> and then the field hockey people were just standing around, so I was like, well, that looks like my kind of thing. So <laughs> I went to the field hockey field, and the first thing she had us do was to run five loops of this field, which is almost a mile. And I had never had to run that fast, that far before. Um, I came in second to last, and uh, and then we had a timed mile after that. Again, I'd never ever run more than like the length of my block before in Brooklyn. And so this is all new to me and everything. And so like after the mile and the warm up beforehand, we did, had two and a half hours of practice. So like we're running up and down the field, we're doing suicides, we have a stick and a ball and a mouth guard, and this is all new to me, and I'm like totally overwhelmed, but I'm loving it. I was so loving it, even though it was really painful. So after practice, 
I decided that I really wanted to stay on the team and, and to do something new. And, and so the next morning I got up and I was like, there's so much running involved in this sport. Uh, I better learn how to do that. <laughs> I better learn how to run those five loops for, to warm up, you know, again, which is like, if you've never run before, if you've never run that far, that's, that's a long way to go. And so I practiced that every morning for a couple of weeks and I, you know, then I was able to run more and more. And then I just started to love it. I loved getting up early in the morning. Sometimes it was just me. Sometimes it was me and my friend, Christina from the Bronx. And we'd get out there because we both really wanted to be able to contribute to the team. So that was 1989. We fell, both fell in love with running. And I ran all the way out, all the way throughout high school. I also played lacrosse, varsity four years. What? And then I, in in college, I continued to run recreationally, and then I continued to run recreationally as I entered the corporate world. <laughs> I give you once a part of the corporate world. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I did that, and then uh, I started teaching, and I got married, and that is when, um, about a year and a half into my son's life, he was a year and a half old. Uh, I decided to move down to Maryland from New York, and that's where all the problems started. I moved down there without my husband. My husband stayed in New York because he had his own job. I had a new opportunity in Maryland. I had to learn how to drive. I had to buy a car. Not in that order. <laughs> I, I, um, uh, and then it was just me and my son uh, alone. And he's like he is now gets sick very, very frequently. And so he he missed a lot of school, which meant I missed a lot of school. And then I was stressed out and da da da, gained a lot of weight. I didn't feel like I had time to prioritize fitness activities. Um, I did from time to time. I would go for three or four weeks, feel great, and then he would get sick again. And so it would, it would be this cycle of starting and stopping. And then eventually I just didn't, I was like, I just, let me just focus on my son's health. So things kind of got out of hand from there. I, you know, I gained weight. I had a lot of physical pain and then had a two year long sinus infection uh, just because I was, yeah, when you're stressed out and there's a lot of cortisol in your body, you know, things happen. And so, but I decided to move from that job after three years because I, it wasn't good for me or my family and uh, it was great professionally, but everything else was, uh, it, it was taking a toll on everything else in my life. So I moved back up North <laughs> to New Jersey, <laughs> two states away. And, oh my God. <laughs> New Jersey's the best, though. Come on. New Jersey's I, I really like New Jersey. Um, and I'll tell you about New Jersey a little bit later on <laughs> in the interview. Anyway, so I moved back to Jersey to an even more stressful job, but at least I was closer to home. And so a year into that, I, I kept all of my sort of clients, my private lesson clients, my piano, voice, Spanish, French, guitar, even though I didn't really play guitar, I knew my five or six chords that I would teach to people. And anyway, so like I would do that every weekend. I would leave my job in Jersey, commute down to, to Maryland, teach a full day, sometimes two days, and then come back up and work. And so on um, you know, that trip back, that's when I had this heart scare that you, you can read about in the book. And that was the sort of cathartic moment when I started to to need to run again. I, I knew that I uh, would need to change my lifestyle um, after consulting with a cardiologist and everything. So from 2004 to 2008, I wasn't really doing a whole lot of physical fitness activities. And I was stressed out and I wasn't eating well um, for my body. And so 2008 was when I turned things around again. And I started, I got back on the treadmill and ran that first mile. I mean, ran that first mile. <laughs> I probably ran for the first 30 seconds and then like got out of breath and then walked and then ran. And it took me 17 minutes and 45 seconds, which for me, I, you know, I knew that I could run an 11, 12 minute mile. I knew that, but um, you know, back in the day. So that, that was disappointing for me. It was really, really um, discouraging. But in that discouragement, I said, well, I got to do better. <laughs> and, um, and that's when I got into my habit again of running every day. Well, most days of the week anyway, get on my treadmill, have a goal, meet that goal, and then go on with my life. So yeah, that was 2008. After a couple of weeks, I started feeling better, started sleeping better. My son, uh, because I was sleeping better, my son wouldn't, was, wasn't getting as sick as much and <laughs> vice versa. And then, you know, I just, and I started to lose weight. I was over 300 pounds 
at that point. And so I started to lose weight very consistently without much of a change in what I ate. It was because I was exercising so much because I went from one mile to like three miles. Then it would go to five miles. And then I would say, oh, I need another goal. And so I'd sign up for a 10K. Because I just loved running. I loved, the, I loved the way it made me feel. Not necessarily in the moment, but afterwards. Because in the moment, it doesn't always feel good. <laughs> so, but, you know, it, but, I mean, you know you're doing something really good for your body. So, um, so that's that. And then I, after doing 10Ks and uh, eventually doing half marathons, and, of course, along the way, I was doing a lot of cross-training. I was doing yoga. I was doing swimming. I was cycling. You name it, I was doing it. So signed up for half marathons, got some friends to, to join with me in my crazy adventures. And then one friend says, hey, you know, why don't you, uh, you know, sign up for a marathon? A friend from Jersey, of course. And, well, um, Jersey. <laughs> and I said, um, I was like, hell no. Okay. <laughs> hell no. Okay. I'll do it. I love that. And so that, you know, that's the start of like my, I wouldn't call it an addiction, but like my like pure enjoyment of not really long distance running. Yeah. Uh, that was a really long answer <laughs> to your question. Well, but it, it like, it raised a lot more questions for me because I think one of the things that, that I know I personally have struggled with and I know a lot of the women that I know struggle with is like that it doesn't feel good in the moment. So how like before you go out for that run in the morning, you're thinking, this is going to suck. This is going to hurt or it's raining or I ran yesterday or I didn't sleep very well last night. Like, what is it for you that gets you out the door, even when you know, like, this is not going to feel good? <laughs> <laughs> um, like tomorrow when I have to get up at 4.30 and run six miles. Yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after a while, after about, you know, it takes 21 days to make a habit, three weeks, right? So mm-hmm. after that, you know, it just becomes habit. And you, you look forward to finishing, even though you know you're not going to, you know, you might be tired that first mile. But eventually, and this happens on most of my runs anyway, eventually I start feeling better. I wake up. I mean, I'm already awake. I'm a morning person. But I wake up and I just start, like, getting my, in my groove uh, for most of my runs. Not all. Sometimes I never get in my groove. But I know that I've put in the mileage for my training and for my overarching goal, which is long-term health and wellness, right? So I know that I'm putting, putting money in a bank, so to speak, for yeah. that. So, like, there's always something that I gain from every workout, even though I don't want to be there, even though I know it's going to be hard, even though I know there's going to be, like, a billion feet of elevation, uh, elevation gain, or it's raining, or it's, like, on Friday, I ended up running in complete darkness at night because I started late, and my mom got really mad at me. <laughs> because she, she listened, she looked at my Instagram story. <laughs> Which I didn't think never too old. She knew how to to use Instagram. (laughs) Well, I saw your Instagram story. (laughs) Like, oh crap! (laughs) I appreciate that you were out so late. I'm like, look, I had to, you know, I had to get my six miles in. Okay, mom, and it started late. I had a really long day, but yeah. So you know, you just you get over yourself. You know, and, and it is a really, really good practice. Um, and it's very transferable to other areas of your life. You get over yourself. You whine. Okay, let, let yourself whine for a minute, but get outside. You know, yeah. like, you know, we are the only people, most of the time, 99% of the time, we're the ones that stop ourselves. And so, like, if you can train yourself to get rid of those voices or to, to like, just sort of pummel through those voices in your head because I mean, all of us have them. Yours is, uh, is it Winona? Is, is oh my it? God, it is Winona. <laughs> I love that you know her name. <laughs> I read your books. <laughs> it's Winona, yes. <laughs> exactly, you know, you've got to be able to talk back to your, talk back and be like, I got work to do. And sometimes you have to be, you know, you have to... Let's go, Myrna. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Sometimes it takes me an hour to get out, get out the door, but I still yeah. get out the door. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you know, you do the work and you, yes, get over yourself. Yeah. It's so fun. Here's what I noticed the other day, because I've been on this run streak where I've literally been running every single day with no days off for, um, it's, it's almost three weeks now. And I was like, I kind of challenged myself to do it. And I thought, 
there's no fucking way I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> but like a strange thing happened. I started to notice that there were these, like the same little things I would say to myself at about half a mile in mm -hmm. every day. And I'm like, well, look at that. Look at me saying the exact same thing. So now when I hear the voice in my head going, this is really hard, you should stop. I'm like, you say this every day. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, yay. So like, <laughs> stop it. Exactly. Right? It's like my Winona is like the girl who cried wolf in my head every single day. So yep, it's kind of, yeah, I get it. Like it's getting onto your own stories and then recognizing that like that's all it is. That's all they are, stories, right? And then you know, so you know that a half a half a mile in you're gonna feel a certain way, but then maybe three quarters of a mile in or two miles in, then you'll finally hit your groove. Me, three or four miles. <laughs> takes so long. I'm like, why am I doing this? It's the same thing. Why am I doing this? Why am I outside in the rain? Yes. Why? Why? <laughs> uh, just why? <laughs> I'm just getting kind of, like tattooed on our foreheads. Why? <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So here's what I want to really know from you. Cause I don't think you and I have ever had this conversation about the, like the ultra marathons that you're doing mm -hmm. and like, what is it about so, like, what made you, all right, so you did your first marathon, then you did a second and a third. Like, how many marathons have you done so far in your life? Um, I have done nine marathons <laughs> so far. That's not, you know, people That's a lot. Marathons, okay. <laughs> well, so, okay, but if you count all of the ultra marathons you've okay. done, you count, like, the marathons within. So, all right, so nine marathons and ten ultra marathons. That's a lot. Yeah, okay. So what, what gave you, so you did nine marathons. I mean, I guess like, yeah, that would give me the incentive to do, I'd be like, all right, what's next? But like, for real, like what, what made you think like, yes, this is absolutely within the realm of possibility. I'm going to run 50 miles. Well, you know, that was, it was really uh, an external thing. It was, um, what happened was... <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was at the end of my first trail marathon, and that was three marathons in, I believe. Yeah, first trail marathon, and I was really excited to be done, and, and really excited to just have completed this amazing thing, and my body felt good. I was tired, but my body felt really good, and, I, and it was only like a, a, an hour more than my, my first marathon time. And so I was really, really proud of myself. But as soon as the race director, who is my friend, <clears throat> puts the medal on me, he goes, uh, so next year, 50K? <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, hell no. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. And that was it. That was it. And I, so at the same event a year later, because it was, um, it was a New Jersey Trail Series Ultra Festival where he had a, it was a, a marathon of 50K, 50 mile, 100K, 100 mile. And so I was like, all right. <laughs> and I went and did the 50K uh, the following year. And my, my family was there and I had a friend there. My friend Nikki, who was in the book, she came and, and uh, supported me for that. And uh, yeah, and that was, that was my first ultra as a 50K. And I, I could not believe that I finished it. Even though, like, I knew I could do it physically because it's, it's really only five more miles. Oh, right? It's all mental, though. It's all mental. Because, you know, at the end of a marathon, you're like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I can't go on any. But you have to, right? And so I did. And uh, But there were all these, like, amazing people out on the course. And uh, there was, this, like, this whole group of Navy SEALs. Uh, or Navy something. And they were, like, running in, like, single file, looking like robots. But they were like, good job. Probably in like combat boots too, right? Yeah, no, they were no, they were in singlets. But first of all, it was like twenty degrees, right? and they were in singlets and shorts. Okay, <laughs> I will never get there because <laughs> if it's cold, it's cold. Yeah. But yeah, and it was it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. It was a loop course. It was a uh, so three. 10 mile loops. So that kind of, it helped me mentally because I knew exactly where I was all the time and exactly how, it, how much I needed to go. That for some people that might be a mental challenge, but I love loops. Mm -hmm. Zone out. <laughs> I know wow. what I'm doing. I don't have to think about where I'm going next. But um, so yeah, that was my first in my first ultra in 2000, 2012, maybe. Okay. 
no, 2013, I'm sorry. 2013, and then the next one. It's only been five years. Has it really only been five years? That's crazy. Wait, marathon, my first marathon was Marine Corps. That was 2011. Then the next, <laughs> next year, my friend said, hey, let's do two marathons, <laughs> you know, in the same month. And so we did <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. Well, my response was, right? Exactly. And you so, need to get a t-shirt with that. That needs to be like hashtag <laughs> hell no. Okay. <laughs> swear to God. That, mark that. That's got, that's got to be the title of your next book, please. <laughs> please. And so, yeah. So, uh, and I did the, so it was the Steamtown Marathon and then the Marine Corps Marathon because we use the Steamtown as a training marathon. <laughs> I love those two words together. <laughs> Just like my Boston Marathon this year, it's a training, it's a training race. It's a training <laughs> It is for my 65 yeah. in May. This is amazing. <laughs> but like in five years, like holy shit, you've done a lot. Uh, well, yeah, like I, I, I mean, damn girl. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but it's, it's all been like, I feel like this is what my body was made for. Yeah. Uh, like, I feel like somebody just said to me the other day when I was, uh, you know, on this nighttime trail run, because of course it was light when I ran into her and we talked for about 20 minutes on like a gravel road in the middle of nowhere. And she says, your knees don't bother you. And this is a really, uh, she's a really fit woman. I used to teach her a kid a couple of years ago. She's like, your knees don't ever bother you. I'm like, no, well, actually my knees bother me when I need to change my shoes. And so, but I don't have any sort of knee issues or, or anything like that. And she's like, you know what? Then, then that means that you were made to run. Yeah. I was like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank well, you right? for saying that. Because I feel like it. I, I mean, you, you know, I'm who I am in my body, but I feel like when I'm out there, I'm doing the most natural human thing that I could be doing. Yeah. And so, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe in a couple of years, I will have knee problems. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd rather get knee problems from doing like really intense physical activity than not doing anything at all. Right? Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. So. Well, and you do a lot of strength training though. Like, so you, you don't just run. And I think that is like a big mm -hmm. factor for a lot of runners because that's all they do. And then, you know, the, the strength piece of it mm -hmm. gets ignored and then they do end up with, mm -hmm. you know, with issues. Like, oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do. Well, the funny thing is now I had to cut back on my strength training because my coach is crazy. <laughs> and for example, um, Wait, is this coach Mike, this is coach Mike. All right. I'm going to show that text okay. later. Keep going. <laughs> so, you know, the first couple of weeks and he's the coach of the team that I'm on for Boston marathon. It's an all teacher team sponsored by Highlands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um and they they are the they deal they're the um leg cramp relief sponsor of the marathon and so they put together this teacher's team and and we had the option of training with this with their team coach and it's like i've never trained for a marathon or anything uh with an actual coach let me let me see how it goes so the first week i was like this does, does he think i'm a joke what, what, give me a three mile run i could do a three mile run. <laughs> and then the next week I was like i could do this what and then the next week <laughs> craziness and, and then he had me running uh, I only had one day off I was like yo <laughs> like, um, and then so I guess he was just trying to you know feel me out and see where I was and um, mm -hmm. you know he, he knew who I was and everything and knew what kind of races I did but like you know, but then, but then he just went crazy so two weeks ago <laughs> no actually last week was I did or two weeks ago rather I did a 50 mile training week which I've never done before <laughs> Um, I didn't die. Yeah, completely prepared for it, and I feel so strong and amazing, and just oh, when this week at thirty four. Thank God. <laughs> so, well, what does a fifty mile training week look like? Like, how did that break down on your on across? Uh, I'm gonna have to write it down. Wait, okay, so I had Monday. At least I missed. Um, I also, sometimes I deal with, I have sciatica issues. And so I'll have to take a couple of days off. Even not muscular, it's a nerve issue. So, but if you do have tight muscles, it sometimes irritates the sciatic nerve, right? So I missed out on my long runs. And so in place of my long runs, I did a Saturday long run, a, a Saturday run of six miles. And then Sunday I did three miles. 
So I missed, uh, so I missed because I missed those long runs. I had to make up some mileage on Monday and I was feeling completely fine by Monday. So I had to, so I did eight miles and then seven and then eight and then eight or something like that. And then I had a day off and then I did, um, then I had to do six on Saturday and 15 on Sunday. Yeah. Damn. That was 50 and a half miles. That's a lot. Um, I mean, that really is a lot for one week. It is a lot for one week, but... Um, well, it's a lot for a month, actually. I mean, like, depending on where you are as a runner, right? But, like... Yeah, it's, like, it's a lot. But, like, I cannot believe that I was able to do it. So sometimes, sometimes, and this is, this is good to know, sometimes with the longer runs, like, if I have a, an eight-mile run scheduled, sometimes I'll do six in the morning and two in the afternoon. Yeah or four and four or three and five, depending on how I'm feeling, what I have to do. I work in a boarding school, so sometimes I'm on duty from 11, 11, 30, 12 at night. So I'm not going to get up the next morning. And so I'll do everything in the afternoon. Or I'll, you know, switch it up and, and move around my recovery day so that I'm not feeling crazy and overly tired. So I'm, I try to be flexible with myself. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. And like, I think, yeah, as long as, I mean, the, the long run that you're doing, like the 15 miles, like whatever is your like distance run for the week, like get that in in one spot. But like, as far as just getting time on feet, like, yeah, it makes perfect sense to kind of break it up throughout the week. For sure. And even sometimes like occasionally and not every time, because you do want to have time on your feet for the long run. Sometimes it just doesn't work out where I, I can do, excuse me, where I can do 15 miles all in one fell swoop. Sometimes I'll have to do 10, go to work, <laughs> yeah. um, do whatever, run errands and stuff, and then come back and do five or whatever. But yeah, I try not to do that too much mm-hmm. because it is important when you're doing long distance running, as you know, to yeah. have time on your feet. So now for a 50 mile race that you're training for, what would be your longest run before race day? And then what would your taper look like? <laughs> What's the taper? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> well, well, like, okay. So let's see. My my next ultra is actually I'm I'm training for the North Face um, Endurance Challenge in DC, 50k, and that's at the end of April. So that's after, I guess, two weeks after the Boston Marathon, and um, which I forgot to tell my coach about. Um. Anyway, so. <laughs> Hopefully he has you on the schedule for 26.2 that week. <laughs> let me wait. Let me tell you about this coach real quick. Um, I'm not used to people like calling me on my phone, like without texting me first. Yeah. <laughs> it's rude. Right? So, it is rude. So I'm sitting on my couch, right? Eating a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I hadn't logged my miles for that day, but I had done them. So, so I get this call from my idol. I'm like, why is he calling me? <laughs> so I answer the phone. And he said, hey, it's coach. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? You better be at the gym. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like um, I'm eating my, I'm eating a burrito on the couch. <laughs> I went to the gym already. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> oh my God. That's some in your face coaching right there. And I'm not, you know, I'm not one. I'm, I'm not type A. But I do like to be in control of me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, <laughs> I never felt like I needed an accountability, anything. But he is like on top. He's like, you did not log your miles today. Did you split them up? <laughs> like, like, what, God. What did you do? <laughs> I love this guy already. <laughs> to me. No, and you know what? I have, I, I didn't know I could improve so much. Like I... And this is like, and this is an online coach, but he is on top and he knows his shit and he, so good. Oh my goodness. Like I will never not train with a coach again. Yeah. Like, because I'm, you know, and I'm a, I'm a running coach. Like, like. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it is so hard to coach ourselves though. Yeah, yeah. it really is. It really is. Like, I get the mileage done. I get it done. Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to take a little longer. Exactly. Oh my god. Now that's. I mean, that's a. That's like a great like realization, though. Is that like like even a coach needs a coach. Mm -hmm. Even a coach needs a coach for Mm -hmm. sure. And I totally didn't answer whatever your question was, so I apologize. I don't know what it was, but I love this story about him calling you, and you're like, and I was eating a burrito. I'm like. (laughs) 
Wait, so I I meant to show the text oh. from him at the beginning. I totally forgot. I got completely distracted. But I want to show this now. So while I'm setting that up, I like talk to talk to everyone about this your next challenge, which is gonna be a hundred miles. Yes. No, a hundred um uh wait. Okay, so I'll just <laughs> I'll just list my events. So I've got Boston Marathon mid April, and then I have another training race, the North Face Endurance Challenge, fifty k. And by the way, if you've never run a trail race before and you want to try out running a trail race, that's really really well supported. The North Face Endurance Challenge is fantastic. They have five k all the way up to fifty miles. And so, and where is that? The one in D.C. is in Sterling, Virginia, and it's, they use the Potomac Heritage Trail. Absolutely gorgeous. And, again, very well, well supported. The, the swag is top of the line. Nice. Okay, North Face, um, North Face shirt. I mean, I'm a Merrill-sponsored athlete, so I'm not going to be saying that by the way. North Face right now. I cheated on Enel with a she fit bra, so we're just going to keep that quiet. Too. Okay, 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 okay. okay, all right. So you can you me and the 5,000 viewers. <laughs> and so, so I got that, and then that's, that's April. Oh, I have a half marathon uh, in two weeks. I forgot about that. Asheville half marathon, not sold out yet if you want to hear it. <laughs> oh, my God, I'd love to run there someday. It was, it just was... Um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. Um, I'm also speaking at the um, the dinner before the night before. Okay, so there's that, and then April, and then May. I have this is one of my goal races of the year, and it is a 65k trail race in the Azores Islands, nice. out in the Atlantic. They belong to Portugal, and so I'll, and they're flying me out and everything, putting me up, and um, and so I get to do that, and I'll be training hard for that. And then <laughs> I've got some other things that I can't remember off the top of my head now, but the other big sort of seminal race this year is Trans Rockies, the Trans Rockies six day stage race, which I attempted uh, last year and I didn't finish. I finished 72 of the 120 miles. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> but over, six, over six days, over six days. But it was in the Rockies. At altitude. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> um, so I'm going back um, because as I, I've written about it, I wrote about it for um, Outside Online. I have some unfinished business. And so um, actually Coach Mike is uh, on board. Coach Mike and also and I'll be coaching with another coach afterwards. Are They're all getting me ready for that. So that, you know, even if I don't finish, I would like to finish, but if you, even if I don't, it's such a fantastic event and experience. I just want to go back because it's like running camp for grownups. Yeah. And, um, but, and then there's something else <laughs> that I'm forgetting. Oh, I'm going to do Havelina 100, 100 K again. Okay. All right. So this is perfect. Like, let's show, let's just show for, for all of you <laughs> watching. This is the craziness that is Myrna's life. So I don't know if, so those of you that are watching, it, I hope you can see this text. If you can see this text, let me, let me know. Um, just drop a little line, but I'm going to read it out. Like, I think this is actually, Myrna, please you read it to us. Cause okay. So uh, we're going back and forth about training stuff. And so actually this uh, last night, I got this kind of out of the blue. He goes, one day, the seed that has been planted in your ultra soul will lead you to 100 miles. I'll be here to get you there. And then I said, oh, Lord, the pressure is real. I'd actually like to do Tahoe 200 one day. <laughs> he says, no pressure, no hurry, just a seed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So wait, i just like to point out, though, that he's not the one mentioning the 200 miles. So, like, let the record show <laughs> Six months from now, when you signed up for this Tahoe 200 or a year from now or whatever, and you're like, yeah, Coach Mike made me do it. I'll be like, wait a minute. Actually. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so good. And that's, so, you know, that's actually, that's a result of, you know, more sort of runner peer pressure. Because I was at my, I was at um, one of my book signings. I was at the New York City Marathon Expo. 
And, uh, and so one of my friends showed up and said, who had just done Tahoe 200. And he's, and he says, Hey, you know, Tahoe 200. I'm like, just stop. I'm not doing it, but tell me more. Um, he's like, Tahoe, you know, okay. <laughs> Tahoe 200 has a, the first half of it. You only have to, you only have to keep a 21 minute mile. And, uh, for the first hundred miles. <laughs> And then the next half of it, you only have to have a 27 minute mile. And I was like, oh, maybe I could do that. Like not now, obviously. He's like, yeah, you can probably do it next year. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to do it next year. But like, watch me sign up and do it next year. Yeah, it's <laughs> happening. I feel like once you say it out loud, that's, it's pretty much over. Like, oh well, yeah, that's true. pretty much as good as done. <laughs> I mean, this does, so I love your story about how you have unfinished business with the 120 miles. The trans Rockies, yeah. Because I know, um, I mean, I've, I've talked to quite a few women that have like attempted races, longer races, mm -hmm. like maybe a half marathon or a marathon mm -hmm. or, you know, something longer and like did not finish. Mm -hmm. And there, and then there's a lot of inner mean girl talk. Uh -huh. It happens. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know there have been races that you've attempted and that you didn't finish. And like, I, like you just have this amazing, like, oh, didn't finish, moving on. Like, but you I don't really automatically feel like that because I, I do beat myself up. So talk us through like how you bring yourself around. Yeah. Um, it, but it happens fairly quickly. So, for example, when I, I realized the second day into Trans Rockies that I wasn't going to finish because we were going up and over Hope Pass. And which is at 12 and a half thousand feet. We start at eight, go up to 12 and a half thousand feet, then go, go back down to around eight. And uh, in Leadville, the, I got up and over a whole pass, but it took me six hours to do some just, I think it was six miles. It was like an hour a mile. And it was the first time and I could really start feeling the altitude sickness coming in. I didn't know it was altitude sickness, but that's what it was because I saw the medical team afterwards. And um, so I got up and over and back down, but there were five more miles to go. And I wanted to do it. I was, I was, you know, I was ready to do it. It was going to be hard. I was really tired. But the med person, the medical person says, hey, you know, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to pull you off the course, but I would say you should probably stop because you know it'll take you about two hours two more hours to get to do five miles and it would and, and I was like okay <laughs> I said okay <laughs> I went up and over Hope Pass which is a huge accomplishment for me for somebody my size and you know whatever and um, so I was happy with that but I was also sad that you know I essentially pulled myself off the course because I didn't want people to wait another two hours for me because they were ready to close up. And I was like, you know what? I've done something really incredible today. But then throughout the next hour or so, as I was walking off the course via another trail, I started falling <laughs> and, um, you know, and thinking I could have finished. I could have finished. I know I could have finished, but then I would have had to make these people wait. And, um, but I could have finished now I feel bad and da da da. But here's the incredible thing. So the guy that I was with, he, the, he was a medic, right? His name was Barrett. And he was, he was real cool, real like into like transcendental meditation. <laughs> like, walk in and just hearing me just like wow. chatter away and, and ball. And then he's like, you know what? I think we were meant to meet today and to have this walk to, you know, to the other trailhead. I just think, I just feel it in my heart that we were meant to meet. And then, I don't know, you just said that and I was, and then I was okay. <laughs> and we had a great conversation. Now he's like, I know you're really sad, but you just, you just, you did a really, really great thing. And, you know, you have five more days to prove yourself. And, uh, and I was like, I love you. <laughs> but then the other crazy thing, this is the other crazy thing. My mom last year got, uh, she had leg surgery. Right. And then um, I spent and this this past summer, I spent uh, a couple of weeks trying to get her out and out and about getting back into like a physical fitness routine, join a gym and like show her how to use the machines and everything. And so we did that. And so as we're as we get to the trailhead and we sit down and we're waiting for somebody to come pick us up my, uh, I get a message from my mom who was sending me a picture of herself. This is the first time she's ever done this in her life. She took herself to the gym by herself and she was on a treadmill. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. As soon as I, I was like, if, 
this is what this all means. If I, if my, if it is my job and my life's purpose to get people to believe that they can um, yes. be physically active no matter who they are and no matter what they've been through or whatever, then I'm good. You know, like, right. Yeah. Like what if it's not about like finishing the race or any of that stuff and just about like who's watching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. whose life is changed because you stepped up and showed up to that start line. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? And that framed the entire rest of the five days. I was like, you know what? I really want to finish each stage, but if I don't, I am not going to beat myself mm. up because I'm going to continue posting on Instagram and stuff. And, uh, and look, my mom went to the gym by herself. That is all at my job is done. <laughs> I flew all the way out here and I had to go past so that my mom would go to the gym by herself. Done. <laughs> Yep, exactly, so exactly. Awesome. You know, and then you know, I had the next day was um, was pretty tough. It was it was fourteen miles, or or twenty four. It was twenty four miles, and I finished fourteen. 14, and I'm like, I don't feel like doing. You know, and then I was having stomach issues, and like because that that's one of the symptoms of altitude sickness. I was like, like really severe stomach issues. And so I stopped at 10 miles and but the, the amazing thing, another amazing thing, because there were so many amazing things that came out of this was that, you know, people were like, okay, well, you'll start again tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't finish today either, <laughs> you know, but we're out here. We're having a good time. You know, it is, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. So like, I love those, I love those kinds of situations. And I think trail running in particular is, is the community uh, is really, really good at that. And, you know, seeing that, you know, there are other trail races, you know, you can, there's so many other trail races you can do. So just do your best today. Yeah. And, uh, and be happy with what you achieve. So amazing. Mm. Yeah, and don't you find that like runners just, that is the spirit of running. Like I've never met a runner that was like, oh, you failed because, you know, well, there are those jerks out there. There definitely are those jerks out there. There are many more people that are like, <laughs> okay, well, you know, there's another half marathon next weekend. You could try right. it. Yeah, or well, another here's 5K the thing. or another whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like you said, you, I have unfinished business with that race, right? Because that's the whole point. Like you can always do it again. Mm -hmm. Right. You can always go and do, you know, you can always show up to another start line or the same one over again. Like just yep. because this one time doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And like, what was amazing about showing up? Mm -hmm. Like what, what happened as a result of you showing up? And like, like you said, maybe it wasn't finishing the race. Maybe it was something completely different yeah. that happened as a result of that. Yes. So, <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. I love that. <laughs> Okay. All right. So here's what I want to do. Um, cause, Oh God, I've like, I've asked like three of the questions on my list here and I know we've got people online that want to ask a million questions as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to conclude the interview portion okay. of our program this evening yeah. and I'm going to say thank you so much Myrna for joining us and sharing all of your wisdom. And, um, before we go into questions, I just want to, um, give you a moment. Like, how can people find you? How can, I think everybody knows how to follow you. Follow you, but just in case, <laughs> how can people follow you? How can they get more of you? Sure. I am on Instagram and Twitter as at the Mernovator. I do have a blog, which I am currently in the process of sort of just rethinking and reconfiguring. But there's still lots and lots of posts up there. The last one I did was in August, but there will be more. Just kind of like in a slightly different vein. Um, just as I change, as my life changes, and my life will be changing drastically. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, and um, let's see. So that's the Fat Girl Running. Oh, yes, your Facebook group. Tell everybody about the okay, Facebook group. Okay, right, okay. Can I talk about my blog? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> fat Girl Running dash Fat Runner dot blogspot dot com. So that's the blog. And so there's still tons of um, posts up there that are that are still relevant to training and uh, like the stories we tell ourselves and the things that people say to people who are um, not thin, uh, who love exercise. There's lots of that. And then, uh, yeah, so that's that blog. I have a Facebook, two Facebook pages, one that my um, publicist runs, and that is Myrna Val the Myrnavator dash Myrna Valerio, no, Myrna Valerio dash the Myrnavator. And so that's my one Facebook page. And the one that I run is called Fat Girl Running. 
But there's also a Facebook group that is absolutely going bonkers in a really, really good way called Fat Girl Running All, is that all caps? I think it's all caps. I all think caps. it is. All caps is all one word, yeah. One word. And it is, it's a closed group. At some point, I'm going to make it a secret group. Uh, yeah. But we, uh, it's, it's two weeks old and there's over 2,000 followers, which is crazy to me. And I just, and like there, right now there's like 40 people waiting to, for me to, uh, <laughs> to accept them. And so, uh, and it's really cool because like, I have like really strict rules. You know, we don't talk about, it's not a group where we talk about weight loss. And I, like, I understand that people are at different stages of their own journeys. And a lot of them are focused on weight loss, but I just, there's so many groups that are devoted to that. I just didn't want it to be part of our equation. And so, and people have been very respectful of that. And, and also in reporting people who do talk about those things. And, and so, but, but it's great because the, the guidelines are so clear that people actually read them and they say, you know, so-and-so like wrote a, questionable post and then I'll and I'll communicate with that person and it's and it always opens up a wonderful conversation and yeah and so people are posting their their picks their their wins their challenges uh sometimes I you know I I put questions up sometimes other people put questions up and it's just a really fun uh, very very motivating and encouraging group of mostly ladies I don't know how two or three men got in there, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and it's it's really cool. So uh, if you want to join us, um, I'll also be doing a live this Wednesday, which is the day after tomorrow, all about trail running. And because there are a lot of questions about running trails, what kind of gear you need, you know, why should I run trails? Why is, how is it different from road running? That kind of thing. So I'm going to be doing a live at probably like at seven o'clock on Wednesday. If you join our group, you'd be able to listen. So I think that's that. Excellent. Or in your book, A Beautiful Work in oh. Progress. We have <laughs> this. Have yeah. <laughs> this is it. It's called the A Beautiful book. Work in Progress. It's beautiful. It was supposed to be much shorter. It was supposed to be about this <laughs> it's amazing uh, I uh yeah I was, I was only supposed to write 65,000 words and I ended up with 110,000 and it, then that's with a lot of editing <laughs> <laughs> so that's my book it was published in October it is uh it is a memoir it's not linear um by any means um but it but there's a lot of uh sort of I, I would say connected personal essays and stories about my my <laughs> trials and tribulations mm. And running and how important family, my family, family life has been in my growth as a runner and as an athlete. And uh, because I think those things are important. You can't really separate the person from their, all their other life experiences. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's doing pretty well <laughs> on, uh, on Amazon. And uh, I, I have no complaints. No, and oh, also, if you like audiobooks, I did the audio, the oh, audio yes. version, uh, with all the accents. <laughs> That's um, awesome. By the way, I had to audition for, that. for your own book. I had to audition for my own book. Yes. Right. Well, I'm glad that you got the job. <laughs> I'm glad I got the job too. Because <laughs> it's <Yeah>. my book. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, okay. That's crazy. Yeah. That's super. Oh, that's like oh, a oh, there's another thing. I also have in the in the next issue of Runner's World, I have a piece coming up, um, and stay tuned for March first, which is Friday, right? Friday, Thursday. Big announcement! Yay! Please. I can't say anything, but big announcement, and it's really cool. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited for that. And you were just like, shit is happening. Oh my God. Which is why, which is why I am actually going to, I'm leaving my job, <laughs> which is really scary. Yeah. But um, thank you, JC Penny, for <laughs> that one ad. <laughs> because then it allowed me, it allowed me to be able to say, okay, well, I can go somewhere and pay my rent a year in advance and just do this yeah professionally and like and try to create other opportunities and try to make it a, a really sustainable thing without having to come back to school and being on duty in a dorm <laughs> you know uh, yeah so yeah because I feel like this is what you were put on the planet to do 
I, you know, I'm finally feeling that. I'm yeah. finally like after this summer, I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. This is what I need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. Yay. All right. So you guys, um, hang tight because we're going to do questions in a minute. But yeah, so this is going to, the, I mean, this has just been an amazing hour. It has been fabulous catching up with you and you guys, all of you, if you are not already in her group, I know like probably half of you already are in her group, but if you're not, <laughs> go join the group because I know she's going to be posting all of her announcements in there and just make sure that you follow everything Myrna does because I think it's going to be amazing. So thank you so much for joining oh, us today. It has been amazing. Oh, pleasure. All right. So it is time now for questions. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm kind of looking through, if you guys have questions, go ahead and drop them in the Facebook live. First one, Stephanie, Joe, will you post links to all of her social media? Yeah, I will. So when this goes up as a podcast, all the social media will be on the podcast page, but for real, like fat girl running, just Go search that in Facebook. It'll come in if you go to, you know, like if you go to Instagram and search the Mernovator. And where else did you say Twitter? The Mernovator as well. Um, you should be able to find them. They're, they're not hard to find at all. <laughs> Susan says she loved hearing you read your own words. So that's oh, pretty amazing. Thank you. It was really wow. fun and intense. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and so Susan was at the retreat in uh, 2016. Yes. Susan. Yeah. Yes. I remember it. Yeah. Okay. Michelle says, does Myrna do any meetup runs for locals? Well, you know, it's sometimes I do. I, sometimes I don't really know where I'm going to be running or cause I, I usually fly somewhere or whatever. And it's, it's hard to put together things because um, people don't show up and I need to get my training on. And so like locally, like here in Georgia, I don't, typically do that. Um, I have put out things where, you know, if anybody wants to come and do a 13 mile or whatever, but those don't always work out because people have different schedules and stuff like that. But in the future, I will actually be doing like official meetups through the various apparel companies and shoe company that I work with. So stay tuned. Cool. Very cool. I'm super, you need to come to Philadelphia. Seriously. Oh, I, will. I will because I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm moving back to Jersey. So yes. Um, Yes. You just made me so happy. <laughs> Where I'm in Jersey? So um, Central Jersey near um, in Somerset County. But like South Wait, Florida. how close is that to Mercer County? Huh? I'm in Mercer County a lot. Okay. All right. See? All right. I know. We, we need to get together. So, oh my God. This is amazing. <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm like, I'm, I'm like having my little fangirl moment while... <laughs> You have all these questions, and I'm like, but shut up. Why is Marta moving to New York, Jersey? Um, and <laughs> okay. All right. Yolanda says, oh, wait. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. I missed one. Stephanie Heath, what is your number one piece of advice? Take recovery days seriously. Um, I haven't always done that, but whenever I don't recover properly, my heart rate goes it's out of control. And it's hard to like breathe and it's hard to just do anything and it's hard to not be tired. So um, when you have a recovery day, like take a complete recovery day. Everybody talks, talks about active recovery, but if you're training for something heavy, like you really need a day of complete rest wow. um, for two days and don't feel bad about it. And it's hard mentally. Like, like I really should be, well, I've got a hundred miler coming up or whatever it is. I don't have a hundred miler coming up yet, but um <laughs> <laughs> but it's really like it's really important to, to rest your mind to rest your body to rest your soul and just do stuff that you know has nothing to do with athletics yeah yeah for sure like go to the movies go have brunch with your girlfriends read a book take right. a bath right binge on some netflix <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so good I, I love that yeah because i think a lot of times folks, and, I, and I've been doing this myself, like doing this sort of run streak where I'm running every single day, but it's not like I'm running five miles or six miles every day. Like, like I'm like, if I go out and I run a half a mile, that counts for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, it's, it's like, it doesn't have to be like a big, huge thing every single day. Like you can still, you know, enjoy like the running without having it be like too much. Right. Sorry. I'm like trying to talk and read at the same time. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, okay, Yolanda says, I'm a new runner and endurance is a huge thing for me. How do you build endurance for runs? Slowly. It takes a long time to reach a point where even three or four or five miles is a comfortable distance to run. You know, it took me, like for me personally, it took like a whole, almost an entire year before I started doing 10Ks. And I really, 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 um, I just focused on the 5Ks. I focused on getting better at the 5Ks. For me, that was getting faster and beating my last time. Not each time, but, you know, but just, you know, improving my mile or improving my two mile time or my three mile time or whatever, feeling better, making sure like one of my goals was to feel like I was completely recovered, you know, uh, or to recover more quickly. So there were all these different goals that I achieved before I moved on to the next distance. And, you know, take time, like really, really just take time and be patient with yourself and follow a plan. Plans are really, you know, there's so many great plans. Uh, <laughs> well, yes, there are. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, so just fall off my chair. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, like, look online, read Jill's books. You know, like, there's so many things that you can do, and, they, and they, they're all very smart in terms of bringing you very slowly. There's that 10% mm -hmm. a week rule, which doesn't apply to everybody because some people can handle a little bit more. But I say it's a pretty good uh, – a pretty yeah. good point of reference for that. And just, you know, be patient with yourself and be kind. You will get there. And then when you reach a day where it's like, oh, my God, how, how, how am I going to get over 10 miles or five miles or six miles? You just do it. I mean, like, there's, you have a lot of talk in your head. Like we talked uh, about earlier, there's a lot of stories that we, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know, I can't imagine myself doing 10 miles. So you get to 10 miles and then you do another mile. And then it's, then it's 11 miles. And then you've done it. Oh my God, you know, so stop telling yourself stories about how you can't get to the next mile because you can physically, we all can, right. well, most of us can anyway. So like, it's just, it's a, it's a matter of mentality. Yeah, for sure. And, and also I think, um, you know, for beginning runners who are listening to this thinking, oh my gosh, I have to run a hundred miles or I'm not a real runner. Right. <laughs> like stop, just stop right there. Right. Like, whether you run a tenth of a mile or a hundred and ten miles, like you're still you a runner. Run, you are a runner. Exactly, exactly. And so some people don't love the long distance stuff, right? And like there's nothing wrong with you if like a half marathon isn't on your bucket list or a hundred mile run isn't on your bucket list. Like this absolutely doesn't make you any less of a runner. It's just a matter of like what you enjoy, what like what brings you joy about running. And for some people it's just like going out for 30 minutes. Right. A few times a week yep. and that's their sweet spot. And some yep. people it's doing a hundred miles in a week and that's their sweet spot. Yeah. Some people have a t-shirt that says, hell no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm writing that down right now. So like, seriously. Yeah. It's gotta be, it's gotta be your hashtag. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, okay. Jen McAllister says, hi Myrna. How much time elapsed between that first 17 mile run on the treadmill and your first road race? Or my, my 17 minute 45 miles, is that what she's talking about? Yes, I think that's what she's talking about. And I read that as your first road rage, and I'm like, wait, did we talk about road rage? Less, I'm a New Yorker. So. I know, like, it's possible. But road race. Um, um, let's see, that was in, I restarted running in 2008, and the whole heart attack scare where I thought I was having a heart attack that happened in July of 2008 when I was in grad school and so and working and doing everything else let's see that was like July so I really like it was at the end of July so really I started back on the treadmill in August and I did my first 5k in April of the next year Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was a long time. Yeah. It, was, it was a long time. Um, and after that 5K, because, you know, I, I got back to a point where I could do three miles again. And, and, and it was easier and easier for me. So I was, I was like, yeah, I really need a goal because I want to see how I'm doing compared to before. And so I did that uh, first 5K in, uh, in a park in central Jersey. And uh, I was very disappointed. <laughs> but then I was like, okay, well, I got to do another one. <laughs> like, because that wasn't great. So I, need, <laughs> so I need to do another one. So yeah, so it was a couple months. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's, I think that's good to know because I think a lot of times people are like, oh, I started training. I should be able to do a 5k. Like if you, if you do the couch to 5k, they're like, oh yeah, we'll have you running a 30 minute 5k in six weeks. Six yeah. And I don't, you know, for some people that already have like a certain level of athleticism, that's fine. But if you are starting from, yeah, you know, from just from jump, like it's, it's really, you really have to take a lot of time, I think, and, uh, so that you don't quit, you know, and you have to know that it's going to take a really long time mm -hmm. to get to a point where even a mile is easy, but you have to stick with it. You know, it's like, I know it's going to be difficult. I know it's going to take probably six weeks for me to get to a mile, you know, mm -hmm. from where I am now. And that's okay. That's okay. You don't, you don't have to, don't judge yourself against anybody else. Everybody's DNA is different. Everybody's level of athleticism is different. Um, everybody's motivational levels are different. You know, you do you, do your own thing. Let your body do its work because it will, if you yeah. want. And I, you hit that, the nail on the head right there too. It's like that whole comparing yourself to other people. Like it's always a lose-lose. Oh, yeah. Like you are never going to come out the winner in that. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's always going to be somebody faster. There's always going to be somebody stronger. There's always going to be somebody better. So why even bother? But just yeah. do you. Just like what you said. I love yeah. that. Um, okay. Yolanda asked, Yolanda Parr, I ran 10 minutes on the treadmill last week and started crying on the treadmill. Oh, I was so proud. I know they thought I was a crazy lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Have you ever cried on the treadmill? I've never cried on the treadmill. I've or have you ever cried while you were like running um, like, for a training run or something? Um, only, um, no, only during after, after races. Yeah. Like the, the first, the first time I like cried was after my first half marathon in Rehoboth beach. And the, you know what the cool thing was like something cool happens every run. <laughs> so it was, Again, my first half marathon, I was chafing everywhere. Like, that was the first time I had experienced chafing. I was in so much pain. My feet were hurting. I had the wrong kind of shoes on. But I was finishing. Um, and as I came into the finishing shoot, in my, on my iPod, that song, the Black Eyed Peas song, I got a feeling. Oh, I love that. That tonight's going to be a good night. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, and I'm not a crier. Like yeah. I don't like cry except for um, on the trail. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, so that was like really cathartic. So like when you know that was a huge accomplishment. So like if you a huge accomplishment, whatever it is, you know that definitely causes one to be emotional. I think and like just to like feel all the feels and like there's nothing wrong with that. Don't you feel like there's something about running that it just releases emotion mm -hmm. or it like keeps us like, I think we go through our lives a lot of time resisting emotion. Like, Oh, I, I, you know, I have to put on a brave face. I can't feel this emotion right now. I just, you know, I have to like power through. And then there's something like when you're running, like that all drops away and oh, yeah, it's just so raw and real. And like, that's like the only time I cry is when I'm running. Right. Well, like, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny. It is. It is really funny. Like that. It happens for me. Like at the end of at the end of some races, mm -hmm. where I know where I know that I've struggled to get to that point, but I've also put the work in, and it just feels it's such a release um, to 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 accomplish it. But it, I also get that feeling when I'm doing yoga. It's so weird. And, you know, um, and I think there, there have been some studies on this, like what if there's like a connection between the physical release and the emotional and mental release. And, and so like when I'm doing yoga in a class, not by myself, because I never like get that deep. Right, into I know. Totally with you. And other distractions. I'm like, oh, it's horrible. But like when I'm in a class, like there, I always reach a point where I'm like, I start tearing and I'm like, what's happening <laughs> here? <laughs> What is this salty liquid on my face that's not sweat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's, you know, when you feel, when you feel like you've accomplished something big, I, you know. Yeah. Of course. And, and if that big thing, like, and it doesn't have to be like completing a marathon, right? Like sometimes your big thing is like, I fucking showed up to yoga today. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Despite right? everything going on in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I made it here. Like, absolutely, of course. Yeah. And if you've never been able to run before, if you've never been able to sustain exercise 
for even five or, or 10 minutes and you do that, do you know how huge that is? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, again, don't compare yourself to others, but everybody has their own level of whatever it is. And your accomplishment may not be the same as somebody else's accomplishment, but guess what? They're both accomplishments. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that. They're both accomplishments. So good. Okay. Um, Susan Alb, I hope I'm saying that right, um, says, not running related, but you, if you are ever at any East Coast World Language Conferences, I would love to meet you. <laughs> I'm a Spanish teacher in North Carolina. <laughs> Well, who knows what's going to happen next year? I may not be teaching Spanish anymore. Uh, that's, that's my plan not to have to. <laughs> I am beyond excited to hear whatever the announcement is on Thursday and find out what exciting thing is going on in your life now. Because uh, like just in the two years since we've known each other, like I've just been watching your star rise and like, it's just, yeah, it's super fun. And I'm like ridiculously jealous that you've met Jessamine Stanley because I have been following her for years. I'm like so, such a girl crush on her. I just, yeah. She is amazing. Yeah. And humble and so fucking smart. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have an intellectual crush. I, she's amazing. She's, yeah. you know, like just like when we're doing, we're shooting a whole day in, in the snow, <laughs> you know, and it was just, so cool to be next to her and so like when I when I um I put this on my Instagram story I was like oh my god you know she's right next to me I'm like oh my god she's like oh my god she's like <laughs> isn't that fun <laughs> it's, so cool. it's like mutual girl crush <laughs> yeah, so good yeah yeah I was I was like watching all of those like because I mean I'm seeing it on her story and I'm seeing it on your story like, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, oh, that's so fun. Okay, wait, we have a couple more questions. And then I know, I know it's 8.30, so you probably have to. Um... Well, I got to get up at 4.30 in the morning to me. All right, all right. So we got two more questions. So, so this is it. We're going to take a question from Yolanda and a question from Stephanie. Yolanda says, there's a half marathon in the Smoky Mountains in September. Would I be crazy to think that I could do it? Absolutely not. What do we say to that? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> That's so good. Um, I love it, Yolanda. Okay, and then Stephanie. Time to train. Time What's to, that? Wait, what? Time to, time to train for a half marathon. It's I know, right? It's yep. September. Like, this is, this is just the start of half marathon season. Like, oh, yeah. this is like pre-training. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie uh, asks, do you have any go-to mantras? I have a couple. Um, <laughs> some are really boring. Uh, one is do the work, Myrna. Do the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or get it done, Myrna. And I talk to myself in third person. I love that. <laughs> get it done, Myrna. There's Relentless Forward Progress, you know, the title of Brian Powell's Ultra Marathon Training Book, which is an excellent, excellent book. If you are training for your first ultra, Relentless Forward Step Over Step. That was one that I put in my book, I think. Uh, and Step Over Step comes from the, the childhood fairy tale, Ricky Tiki Tavi. <gasps> no, no, no. Tiki Tiki Tembo, no side embo. It's Tiki Tiki Tembo. It's, oh, it's a Chinese fairy tale. And, like, and, oh, and they have to do this, like, they're this old guy, the grandfather and this little kid, they have to make this long journey to rescue the little kid's brother from, a, from drowning in a well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a really scary fairy. Wait, so they're walking? They're this walking. Long so, like, so the kid, his brother is, is drowning in a well, in a well, basically. And so he runs to his grandfather. He's like, Grandfather, we have to go save my brother because he's in the well. And so they make this long journey. And, uh, and his name is Tiki Tiki Tembo, No Sarembo, Chari Rari Buchi, Pete Berry Pembo, or something like that. That's his name. Awesome. And, so, <laughs> and so they, you know, they make this journey. And so the grandfather, they're both getting tired. And the grandfather repeats step over step, step over step, just to get them to their destination. Step oh. over step. So I, that's, some, that's one that I employ all the time, sometimes at the beginning of a race. <laughs> wow. But it sounds like it probably calms down the anxiety, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's just very like, meditative and very, you know, just this repetitive step over step, wow. step over step. Yeah, all you have to do is just see the next three feet. Mm -hmm. Well, like, who is it? Um, I think Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just need to see the next step. There you go. Which is like, yeah, that's it. It's like, just yep. the next step, that's it. 
So amazing. Okay. Um, all right. Just one more comment that I want to add, and then we are going to um, then we're going to close for tonight. Jennifer says, "When I talk to myself in the third person, I call myself doll face." I just needed to share that, Jennifer. That is amazing. You know what? It's that's doll face. You are amazing. Yeah. Uh, I know that's second person. Um, <laughs> that is. That is cool, you know, because I, I, I also do the same thing. I say, you know that the movie The Help, which I don't really like, but there's that part where the, where the, um, the one of the maids says, um, you was kind, you was, or you was smart, you was intelligent, or whatever. So <laughs> I say to myself, now this is the second person, I say, you was strong, you was powerful, you was fine. <laughs> I love this. I love this, right? Like, whatever it takes. It's amazing. I'm like going to hear you saying that in my head from now on. So good. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, all right. So it is 8.30. We've been, uh, we've been, wow. you know, this went so fast. Any fat final words that you have for anybody that you think they need to know about you, yeah. about running, about anything? Do you like do your own thing, do what's good for your body and not what's good for anybody else's body, you know? So whatever that means, if it means running a 5k or, or running two miles or working on yoga or whatever you need to do for your own sanity, your own physical and mental well being, you do that for you. Yeah, that's it. I would say that's all you need to do. And then like things will happen. Your, your health and sanity, sanity will come when you focus on yourself. To thine own self be true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for it's joining us tonight, Myrna. It's been a pleasure. And I can't believe you're moving to New Jersey. This is this is going to be epic. So, um, all right. So have an amazing evening. Thank you to everybody you. who joined us. Just double checking. I don't think we have any more questions. So, yeah, have a great night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey there. I hope you really enjoyed my chat with Myrna. It was so much fun to speak with her and just get her wisdom and hear her stories. And it's always a pleasure. Again, links to follow her on social media and check out her book and all the other places that she's appearing are all in the show notes. And real quick before we go, I want to invite you to a very special event coming to New York City next month. It's the first ever Not Your Average Runner meetup, and it's taking place on April 6th. You can get all the details and sign up to be there at www.notyouraveragerunner.com slash meetup. And if you're listening to this after April 6th, or maybe you don't live in New York City, Go to the site anyway, because I'll be listing out where the future meetups are going to be, and you can sign up for them there as well. It has been a pleasure being with you this week. I'm so glad you were here to enjoy my time with Myrna, and I look forward to seeing you next week on the podcast. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Not Your Average Runner podcast. If you liked what you heard and want more, Head over to www.notyouraveragerunner.com to download your free one-week jumpstart plan and get started running today. 